So I'm standing on a roundabout in the middle of an estate in Caerphilly. There's a nice care home behind me. There's a pub and a restaurant over there. There's a supermarket just there. Up there are some offices where I work. And the question is, why am I standing on the middle of a roundabout in an estate in Caerphilly? Well, the answer is very simple. This is the track bed of the Rumney branch of the Barry Railway. And it contains the relic that I'm going to be searching for today. Okay, so let me explain. So far, the Barry Railway have built, from that direction, a very large viaduct, tunnel, seven and a half mile extension around the side of the mountain to get here at Penrose Junction. And they've linked up the Rumney. So far, so good. That's what they set out to do. That was their aim. They wanted to get up the Rumney Valley. Problem, big problem. Basically, the parliamentary powers they obtained only allowed them to run as far as Caerphilly, which is no good whatsoever. They wanted to get up the valleys and possibly even link up with the LNWR at the top, on the Northwestern Railway, who were running up to the Midlands. So what to do? So they approached another railway company, the Brecon and Merthyr Junction Railway. Brecon and Merthyr, as I shall call it from now on. And they said, okay, could we do some stuff with you? Can we form an alliance? And they went, yeah, fine. And the Barry Railway threw a load of money at them. And they expanded and upgraded their lines. And then all they had to do was get from here, at Penrose Junction, across to link up the Brecon and Merthyr, which is about three and a half, four miles away from here. Job done. Except there was this old thing of height and elevation. And along the way, they had to build some pretty spectacular viaducts. And in actual fact, the first one I'm sitting in. So Penrose Viaduct was built to take the line up and over the Rumney line and left the Barry Railway before the junction. The Viaduct then spanned the lines heading north. It was about 25 foot high and the total spanned about 300 foot. Today, the remains of the two abutments and the three supports are in situ. And that is where I was sitting. So what we have today is a cycle path, the Taft Trail, going down to the right. And that was the Romney Railway, which ran down to Tass Wells and joined up at Walnut Tree Junction on the level. Straight ahead of us would have been the line up uh, the Barry Railway, which would have gone round the side of the mountain and climbed and gone over Walnut Tree Viaduct through Garth Tunnel and joined up. Uh, the line at St Fagans and then as I say Penrose Varda would have started here gone across these abutments which right through the trees and come out at height and continued onwards So the track continued on through green fields and down towards the north part of Caerphilly. Now today this is a housing estate and as you've seen an industrial park and here on the map is the aforementioned roundabout I was standing on. The track bed was converted into a road and today forms the main avoiding route past Caerphilly town centre. But on this route was Pennyroyal Viaduct. 
This was 365 yards long and of the three there were no remains and very few pictures left. These ones are taken from a passing train travelling underneath the now demolished viaduct showing the piers of the viaduct long after its closure. The third viaduct was Perkleifant, also known as Clambradoc Viaduct. This was 800 yards long with a metal deck on pillars. There were 16 spans with five approach arches, and it stretched from Clambradoc to the other side of the valley, where it joined at the Barry Junction on the Brecon and Merthyr line. Today, all that's left is the approach arch, behind which runs the current Rumley line. So this is all that's left of it today. One span one arch. It would have stretched right across the valley. Um, up that way, uh, behind it is the Rumley branch, so there's no way of getting up to there. It would have crossed there and then right across this valley and met up with the Barry over the other side. Let's just have a quick explore and see what's up this way, but it's a beautiful Beautiful solid arch, beautiful remains of a bygone time. About a couple of hundred yards from here is Barry Junction, today lost in the trees along a single track road. There's very little apart from this bridge to show there was ever a railway here, let alone a joint one. It cost half a million pounds to build the three and a half mile extension. Half of it was spent on Cloud Raddock Varduct. That is about 64 million pounds in today's money. However, they never really achieved what they wanted to achieve because the Brecon and Merthyr actually did a deal with the Rumney line in order to connect up to the, the top of the valleys and nobody wanted the Barry. So they got mineral rights up the Rumney Valley, but that was about it. And it all came to an end after grouping. In 1921, the GWR said, why do we need all these lines and did a review and decided, well, you know, do we need three big viaducts? And even though they only opened in 1905, they shut again in 1926. They were all demolished in the 1930s, which is why there's so few photos of them. And in fact, if you go onto YouTube and look up Clambradoc Viaduct, you'll see some Pathé News videos of them taking it down. It's worth doing, it's very spectacular. When I was up here earlier on in the year, and just looking around here, somebody asked me, what are these? What is this? And I explained it was a viaduct and it took the line, and where it took the line and this sort of thing. But part of me just wanted to say it's a monument. It's a monument to unfulfilled dreams. But then I thought, 